Chris Masters. Chris, what's going on, man? What's up? Wow, that's going to take some uh, getting used to, that former WWE superstar thing. It's still setting in. Yeah, I know, I know. Very fresh, uh, freshly wounded. I'm, uh, of course, joined by Nick Paglino, uh, and uh, we wanted to ask what up, a few things. Chris, how you doing, man? It's good to have you back on the show. It seems like... Uh... It's been a while since we've heard your voice. It's been a while mm-hmm. since we've heard from you. So uh, thanks for coming on to join us tonight to to talk about what's going on with you. Hey, you're welcome. Oh, wait, you meant the other. Yeah, no problem. Chris, I'm sorry. See, that's going to take some getting used to, too. Oh, that there's, an- there's, there's going to be another, another Chris another for a little while around here? I thought you were talking about me. Hey, Chris, uh, you... There's too many Chris's, man. I know it. I know. I hate I hate my parents for that name. Um <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I'll be honest, and a lot of our fans may not know this. They may not remember us reporting this. They may not remember it being out there. But a few months ago, probably right around the time of WrestleMania, before or after, I was in Atlanta, ran into you there and, and said, hey, I heard you are going to get a good, you know, a big push, you know, and you're over here, you know, fingers crossed and everything was good. Um, but, you know, in hindsight now, which uh, when you put out that, that statement, you – you said that you were surprised. And, of course, just in general, people are surprised when they're let go. I guess not all the time, but in most cases, they probably are. In your case, I don't think a lot of people realize that those reports were, in fact, true, which makes it all the more surprising that you were, in, you know, that you were let go. Um, I guess, uh, I don't know when it happened. You can give us some insight. Uh why were you so surprised? And, and as I said, were the reports of you apparently getting a big push at some point that now never ended up happening, were those true? And is, is that obviously the reason you were as surprised as you were? Um, well, yeah, because I'll say on, on this note, you know, I wasn't surprised in terms of, yeah, they, like if somebody from the outside was watching, you know, they wouldn't be surprised because like, oh, they haven't used Chris Masters forever, you know, which they uh, hadn't used me in any real storylines or anything. They just kind of had me uh, dittering on superstars. But um, the thing is, is, uh, you know, over the last year and a half on superstars, it really gave me time to develop my craft and really uh, put some actual time into matches. And through that, I just started to really uh, take a passion in, uh, you know, the art of professional wrestling. And through time, it started to uh, really translate. You know, I feel like I came along a lot. And Triple H, uh, you know, the the reports on the internet were actually a surprise to me just because, uh, you know, I hadn't really told anybody. And I don't know if that was something that came out of, uh, you know, from one of the writers to the dirt sheets. But the extent of what I was told was uh, back around January of this year, after uh, Hunter had seen some of my matches and Vince, uh, Hunter had pulled me aside and he was telling me, hey, like, we've noticed you've gotten really good and uh, we're just trying to figure out what exactly to do with you. Uh, you know, maybe we need to take you off uh, TV for three months and give you a fresh coat of paint or a repackaging, if you will. And uh, so we kind of left it at that. And, uh, you know, he had definitely uh, come up to me and give me props a couple times. And, you know, I was kind of under the impression that they were going to, you know, figure out something for me. And I was also trying to think of uh, suggestions for myself. And, uh, I mean, that's probably why. I mean, that goes back to what you were saying. I mean, that's why... Uh, you know, it was probably uh, a surprise just because of the fact that, uh, you know, I did feel like I had good things coming. I felt like this was going to be my year. I felt like I'd really uh, gotten to a place where, you know, I I kind of uh, just let go and, I, and gave into the business. You know what I mean? Like, I loved being on the road. I loved working in the ring. I loved all of it. And, you know, it was a hell of a ride. But, um, I mean, that's where, to go back to where you're saying, the surprise came from. And do you think, you know, there were a lot of, we were also getting a lot of reports that, of course, Triple H was getting a lot more hands-on with developmental. Have you seen anything changing in developmental that would give you the impression that WWE wants to go in a different direction now, and maybe that affected you? Um, Well, I mean, you know, I don't know exactly. I mean, I know they're, uh, as I was, or as I was told, they were doing some company restructuring, but, um... You know, I can't pinpoint anything specifically, and I don't know uh, exactly how much, uh, like, Hunter's role has changed as far as uh, what he does and what Vince doesn't do. But, you know, I do know that, uh, like I said, I was on both of their good sides just a few months ago. So, I mean, that's why, uh, again, uh, fast forward to now, it's uh, it's a surprise. And, you know, what you're going to do? 
Now, Chris, you were let go from WWE a while back. I don't remember the exact date, but uh, you know, and then you went back to the WWE, and and you had a couple of strikes against you at that point when you returned this last time due to the wellness policy, and and a lot of people figured you were kind of fighting an uphill battle at that point, and 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 more than likely it would have been difficult for WWE to put a lot of stock behind a guy that did have two strikes against him and one more. You know, obviously they wouldn't have a choice. Do you think that affected you at all? Um, well, it could have been. It always weighed in my mind that, like, from a business standpoint, you got to look at things from a business. And, uh, and that's also another thing in terms of these releases. It's like, you know, the uh, stock market crashed. Uh, you know, we had all these bad things happen with the economy this week. And uh, they look at it like a business. You know, they got to shed weight sometimes. So, I mean, you know. I'm shocked and whatnot, but, uh, you know, still, it goes back to that. And um, from a business standpoint, I mean, what was your question? Oh, just about the wellness policy and whether the two strikes against you had, if you think that might have been something that was going to be hard for you to get over. Yeah, it's just like I said, from a business standpoint, probably that has to weigh uh, in somebody's mind. You know, if you're uh, one strike away from being released, it's like they got to put investment behind a guy. You know what I mean? It takes time and it takes money and... uh, you know, if they're unsure of you for any reason, there might be some reluctance. So, I mean, that could have been a uh, weighing issue, and it's something that, of course, I always thought about because it's like, you know, all it took, all it would take to me is one time of messing up, and that would be it off of my head. You know, Chris, we have a lot of a lot of fans, a lot of the people that tune in to to our show, a lot of people that visit WrestleZone dot com in general. You know, they're they're a part of a, a community of wrestling fans that are that are, I guess, slightly more educated. They follow the product a little closer. They obviously follow the behind the scenes. They read a lot of reports from people that have websites, uh, have radio shows. So we'll throw me and Nick in there, obviously. And, and then there's a number of others. You name your pick of what website you go to, what writer you read. It doesn't matter. But a lot of times, I think that Internet wrestling fans kind of get this uh, this overall uh, society opinion, whatever you want to call it, of whether a worker is good or bad in the ring. And, you know, yep. you probably are, you will be the first to say that you weren't necessarily always the greatest worker. But again, another reason all the more surprising for your release, you feel over the past year since returning to the company, you've really upped your game in the ring. Now, those that don't watch superstars probably wouldn't know that. But a lot of our comments in the chat room are obviously referring to you not being the greatest worker. And so I guess I was just going, my question to you would be, what do you think you have done? Do you feel that strongly about your improvement in the ring that you should have been given that shot? And what obviously do you say to the naysayers, uh, the critics of your in-ring ability? Um, Well, to the critics, I mean, you know, I understand. I mean, a lot of people are, automatically want to look at me like a guy who got a shot because of his body and got in. And a lot of it is typecasted for my first run. You know what I mean? Some people's opinions don't change. And, uh, you know, if you've watched superstars, like you were saying, within the last year, I think anybody, if they watched with an unbiased opinion, would be able to tell that I was slowly becoming one of the best in-ring guys in the company. And, uh, you know, to go back to what you're asking, uh, yeah, I am confident that they uh, dropped the ball with me and that they probably uh, they should have gave me a shot, whether it be you know, me turning heel or just, you know, just something to uh, renovate and make me relevant again before just, uh, you know, just, you know, getting up on, on me as a project altogether. So, um, you know, just to, like I said, to the naysayers, you know, like I said, uh, they're always going to be there. And, you know, you can watch my stuff over the last year if you haven't watched Superstars, and I'll let my work speak for itself. Um, you know, I feel a lot of vindication because a lot of people who have seen it have told me, uh, you know, I've heard from probably 90% of the fans that, uh, hey, you really improved uh, tenfold and really just came along and were getting so great in the ring and putting on great matches consistently. And that's what, it became my release after a while because, you know, I've always loved wrestling. I was never a bodybuilder like I've told a lot of people before. And it was always kind of, uh, you know, I never wanted to be known as just one of those guys who came in like the ultimate warrior who just came in, made a bunch of money, didn't give a care about anybody's opinion or just didn't care. But, you know, the thing is, I did care. And eventually, you know, I wanted uh, my my biggest goal probably within the last year is, you know, I wanted to push and I wanted to start them and I wanted to uh, make a lot of money. But I also just wanted to show people I wasn't a body and that I could get in the ring and go and that I could be a, a great storyteller 
And, uh, you know, eventually that just became my release every week was going in that ring and getting emotionally invested into that match to the point where everything that happened to me was real. And then when I gave it back to, that, to whoever I was facing, it was real to me. So, you know, I just really invested myself into that aspect of it. But, you know, there's a lot of other aspects in the in-ring work. There's the politics. There's, you know, just taking initiative on the other aspects. So, you know, I was hoping my work uh, would speak for itself, but obviously uh, I probably needed to do a little more. And if you had to pinpoint it, do you, you know, could you take a guess at what you think changed from, you know, that that meeting that you had with Hunter when he was telling you that they were keeping keeping their eye on you? Obviously, we've seen the landscape of WWE change in the past couple of months just with them testing new ideas with CM Punk and everything. Do you... Do you think it's a, a change in the mindset of the company, or could you could you take a guess at what you think changed from the last time you spoke with uh, with Hunter? Well, uh, I don't know exactly what changed. That's what always leaves you know. That's what the big question is, you know. Because uh, again, I felt like uh, you know there is a lot of guys that they should have got rid of before me. Come on, let's be honest, please. But. Um, what changed? It could have been just a matter of like you know, like I said, maybe I didn't take enough initiative. I should have probably went to Hunter again uh, numerous times after we talked and throwing ideas, maybe pitched to turn heel. Because I mean, I was just in a rough spot. It was kind of like they hadn't, um, they needed if for you know, my in ring work was coming along great, and they were telling me that, but they needed to bring me back to a place of relevance again. And it's like to do that, you either got to kind of repackage, like he was saying, or give a guy a fresh coat of paint. Or turn heel. Um, and, you know, turning heel never seemed to be an option just because at the time we have so many heels in the company and my, my work as a baby face was really what was progressing. And there is a difference kind of between the two. Not to say I couldn't have.